Hello again everyone, Jessica with From Dream to Seed and today I have a video all about how to plant a fall garden. Planting a fall garden is a great way to extend your growing season and many of those cool season crops that you enjoy in the spring can also be planted and enjoyed again in the fall. In fact, you may find that a lot of those cool season crops do better in the fall. So for example, I exclusively grow broccoli in the fall. In my area, we have really short springs. So when I try to grow broccoli in the spring, it will mature well, but by the time the flower head is produced, which is the part that we typically eat, the weather will have turned so hot that it causes the broccoli to flower or bolt. However, if I plant it in the fall, the early warm weather in the fall will help that plant to grow quickly, but by the time that flower head forms, the weather will have cooled down, which helps prevent bolting. A few of my other favorite things to plant in the fall are turnips, radishes, peas, carrots, and anything in the brassica family, cabbage, um, broccoli, and cauliflower. I also like to choose varieties of vegetables that may store better. Since I'm harvesting right before winter, choosing these kind of varieties will allow me to enjoy them longer over that winter season. And so I choose both hybrid and heirloom varieties that are known to store longer and better. So once you've decided what you want to grow in your fall garden, next you need to determine when you need to actually plant them. And this will differ a little bit depending on whether you're planting directly from seed, whether you're starting seedlings indoors and then transplanting, or if you're just actually purchasing transplants from the store. So let me give you a little bit of an example. My average first frost date usually happens end of October, maybe early November. So for peas, which I'm going to direct sow in my garden, I can look on the back of the package and see that they are mature in about 70 days. So I'm going to take my average first frost date, so let's say October 31st, and I'm gonna subtract 70 days from that. And that's how I know when to plant these peas. Now, if you're transplanting from uh, seedlings grown indoors or from the store, you can subtract a couple weeks off of that because those plants are already a few weeks or maybe, maybe two to four weeks mature. And the reason it's important to have these plants mature before that first frost date is not because so much that they'll be affected by the frost. Many of these plants are actually frost tolerant and can handle a light frost, maybe not a freeze, but a light frost. But it's because about that same time that those first frosts are setting in, the daylight hours have shortened a lot. And having those shortened daylight hours will affect the growth of those plants. A lot of them will go into a dormant type mode where they're not growing or fruiting anymore. So you want to try to have mature plants plants before that first frost date so that you can harvest from those plants before those shorter daylight hours occur. Next, you want to prep those beds for fall planting. So if you have planted something over the summer that was a heavy feeder, um, corn, potatoes, onions, um, garlic, even carrots to a certain extent, you want to amend that soil with either fresh compost or maybe a granular organic fertilizer or both so that you have nice fresh nutrient stores in that soil. And on that same note, anything in the legume family are what we call nitrogen fixers. And this means that they have formed a beneficial relationship with bacteria in the soil. And they will actually form little nodules on their roots and where these, this bacteria can actually convert nitrogen from the atmosphere into a form that is useful to the plants. So the legume family, for example, peas, Anything in this family is great to follow up after um, harvesting a heavy feeder as it will help increase those nitrogen stores in the soil again. So now that you've chosen what you want to plant, you know when you need to plant them and you've prepped that bed for planting, I'm gonna now give you a few tips that will help you keep those fall plants happy. Many crops that we grow over the summer, like corn, squash, um, cucumbers, require pollination, whether from bees or from the elements like wind, in order to produce the fruit that we then eat. Many of our fall crops don't require pollination in order to produce the parts that we normally eat. However, many of these fall crops are still susceptible to pest damage. For example, this cabbage is really susceptible to both cabbage worm and flea beetle. So one of the measures that I take that I have found to be really effective is just applying floating row covers. Since I don't have to worry about bees getting in to pollinate the plant, having these row covers still allows the plant to get sunlight, but it can help keep out things like flea beetles and cabbage moss, which then will lay eggs, which turn into cabbage worms. Another reason that I like using floating row covers is that although it does allow sunlight in, it does block a small percentage of the sun. So a lot of these heat intolerant fall crops really benefit from that. However, there are a few things to consider when you use floating row covers. Number one is they don't allow as much rainfall in depending on the material that you use. So I still have soaker hoses that run underneath of these to allow my plants to get enough water. 
Also remember that some pests like flea beetles actually lay their larvae in the soil. So if you're using row covers and you're still noticing flea beetles, it could be that they're actually coming up from the soil underneath the row covers. But all in all, I think floating row covers are a really great tool to use in your fall garden. Something else that can be really helpful in a fall garden is shade cloth. Many of the plants that we are planting in a fall garden are very sensitive to heat. So using shade cloth is a great way to help protect them and keep them happy and healthy. However, there are a few things to consider when using shade cloth. Shade cloth can come in a variety of colors and thickness. And usually on the shade cloth packaging, it will tell you the approximate percentage of sun that, that shade cloth will block out. And so using a heavy shade cloth like this does really well in helping to keep those temperatures cool. However, it can actually affect the growth of those plants meaning it can slow down their growth rate, which means they take longer to mature. And remember, we're trying to get those plants mature before those daylight hours shorten. So you may want to consider only using shade cloth during really sunny days or during the hottest parts of the day and removing it during those morning and evening hours so that your plants can still receive full sun during the cooler hours of the day. Also remember that shade cloth is a lot of times made from this kind of mesh-like material. So I wouldn't count on using this as something that will deter a lot of these smaller pests like flea beetles. So often I will actually put the shade cloth over top of my floating row covers. So I will also get that pest protection along with the shade. My last tip is if you have anywhere in your garden where you're not going to be planting fall crops or if you are done with gardening for this season, you don't want to fool with having a fall garden, you are just burnt out and I, hey, no judgment, I completely understand, we've all been there, consider planting a cover crop. We never really want to have bare soil in our garden because bare soil is subject to things like erosion and nutrient loss, especially over those harsh winter months. So we always want to be protecting our soil, whether it's by covering it with a mulch of organic matter like shredded leaves or by adding a cover crop. And cover crops are great because not only are they protecting the soil, but they're also adding beneficial things to the soil. So for example, beneficial bacteria, they're adding life into that soil. And again, things in the legume family, so for instance, the cover crop of crimson clover, which I love to use, can add nitrogen back into that soil and actually help improve that soil during those dormant seasons. You want to choose a cover crop that is annual for your area because you don't want to be battling perennial plants that may continue to come up in the spaces where where you want to grow vegetables or fruits or flowers. Um, in my area, a few of my favorites are again crimson clover. I also love to use buckwheat and new garden beds that are in ground because in my area we have heavy clay soil and that buck buckwheat has a really large taproot that can go down and help break up that soil. So research some annual cover crops for your growing zone and use those cover crops to help improve your garden when you're not using it. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope I taught you a little bit more about how to plant a fall garden. Don't forget to follow me on my other social media accounts. I'll link them below where I post daily videos to help beginning gardeners grow successfully. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.